Let's, let's get straight to this important point. The, the, the worsening situation economically as a result of COVID, the, 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 the limited fiscal policy that you have and monetary policy, how bad do you think it, how much worse do you think it's going to get? The Zimbabwe situation is going the other way. Actually, it is the opposite of what you've just said. So basically, we are finding that where we're able to balance the budget. That's what I've been doing in the last uh, two years. Secondly, we have a strong economic recovery, where Zimbabwe will grow faster than its peers in the region and its peers uh, uh, in Africa. We have set aside a, a decent amount of resources to acquire vaccines. And in fact, in the next uh, uh, um, few weeks, we're going on a blitz uh, to basically vaccinate uh, uh, people to the tune of two and a half uh, million no, people no, minister, over the next minister. few weeks. So yeah, it's the exact yeah. opposite. We are doing no. well indeed. No, no, no. Hang on a second, Minister. The World Bank says that the number of people in extreme poverty in Zimbabwe, more than half of the Zimbabweans are in extreme poverty, uh, is the latest statistics from the World Bank. Now, admittedly, many of them were already there, but you're painting a picture, a rosy picture, and I'm suggesting it's not that rosy. Uh, well, the, the picture is never rosy, rosy, Richard. We're all reeling under the impact of the pandemic. Uh, but I can assure you that Zimbabwe is doing all it can to deal with the social impact of the pandemic. We have a very robust social protection program, which is various elements. First of all, there's the productive social protection element uh, uh, in the agricultural sector, where we give free inputs to citizens, to farm, and they've done very well. They've produced about a mil one million metric tons of mm -hmm. maize and maize alone. We're also protecting the vulnerable rural areas through cash transfers and through free, free uh, medication. And, and the vaccine is free. So we have a very robust social protection program that also includes uh, you know, free schooling for vulnerable uh, children. This is, good. this is going very well indeed. Of course, we're doing this with the assistance of our so international partners as well. So something is being done, and we believe that we've had the, the best response to, to the pandemic uh, so far. And our vaccination program is fairly robust and uh, well run, in fact. And, and as you look to, obviously, the, the Delta variant moving in, and, and, and there is this, I mean, there are two things going on here, aren't there? There's the race against virus versus vaccine, and then you've got the race, the balance act of livelihoods versus lives. So where are you balancing? Where do you see Zimbabwe at the moment in both of those balancing acts? Richard, you are right that we have to balance every time the, the need to save lives and the need to save livelihoods. And you have, we have to balance that carefully. So while we have this lockdown, we've made sure that essential industries continue to be open. Uh, the private sector continues to function. Exports continue to be moved around uh, to, to, to the rest of the world. Of course, the, we've introduced a shorter working day uh, in order to, again to restrict the movement as well as the transmission of, 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 the, vi of the virus. So, so it's a balancing act. We've done this for just for two weeks. After two weeks, we'll review, see where we are, right. see where we need to loosen or, or extend. But you can be sure we are watching these things like a hawk. I do that. I know that an extended lockdown can reduce revenues and therefore, you know, reduce our ability to respond to the uh, pandemic in, in, in the first place. So we are balancing this very carefully. And I think we're in the right equilibrium. If you look to the future now that I mean, let, let's look beyond COVID. There is disappointment at the, the extent of the transparency measures being taken by the government. There was a lot more hope than reality has proven in changes of openness and transparency from this government. Are you going to do more to make Zimbabwe a more open and, uh, economy, a more transparent and anti-corruption economy? Zimbabwe is open for business. Zimbabwe is transparent, and it is obvious for, for all to see. And, and where is this uh, optimism, optimism coming from? Just look at the latest IMF report. It will, it will tell you that things are improving. Uh, we are managing public finances better. Uh, for, again, we are looking to, towards balancing the budget as we did, as I did last year. We have a town surplus. 
the exchange rate is, is, is stable. We have a very well-functioning um, monetary policy uh, you know, uh, system, which coordinates very well with the fiscal side, side of things. So the economy is very stable. It, it is growing. Everything is transparent. We have a well-functioning anti-corruption commission that is bringing cases uh, to book. Uh, uh, the justice is taking its course. So, so transparency is, is improving. And Zimbabwe has improved its rankings in the environment for, for doing business, which are, are, are global. And, and introduced a Zimbabwe uh, right. you know, Investment Development Agency, which is explaining to the world how investments are down, how investments are protected. Transparency is improving and the environment for doing business is improving. And so is the macro economy. And we'll talk about it in the future. Minister, grateful that you've taken time. It's, a, it's early evening where you are and I'm grateful for your time. Thank you, sir.